family, it's Michael here. I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. We do have our next revived Zoom meeting this upcoming Saturday, September 12th at 2 p.m. So really hope you can join us. We would love to see you there. For this week's devotional, I'll be starting a conversation uh, that we're gonna continue having in the coming weeks in Revive. And the area that we're gonna be exploring together is the topic of leadership. One thing that this year has made clear to me is that in times of crisis, in times of so much change, so much transition, and in times of uncertainty, people look for strong leadership. We place these expectations on those in power to bear the responsibility of shaping the world to be the way that we think it should be. A just world, a safe world, a world that allows for human flourishing. But I think that for some of us, there can be too much focus on the leadership of other people. And I think that the scriptures invite us to take a different focus when we think about leadership. In the beginning of the Bible, we read of the creation story. And in this story, God makes human beings in his own image. Each one of us bears the image of God. And not only that, but God gives human beings authority over the earth. That people are meant to rule over the living creatures and steward and care for the earth. See, God didn't make human beings to be puppets or pawns in some game. He actually made us to be partners, co-creators with him in shaping the world. And yes, we do read in the Bible of select leaders, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, David, but it was never meant for only these people to be the ones that partnered with God. God wants to partner with all people. And in fact, it's actually, if you read on in the biblical narrative, it's the desire of people, not God, to select specific individuals to bear the mantle of leadership. When the Israelites get to Mount Sinai, it's the people who tell Moses, you go deal with God on Mount Sinai. And it's the people who demand that Samuel appoint a king over Israel. In so many ways, we are the ones who give up the power and influence that God has entrusted to us. But God continues to reach out time and time again to regular people, ordinary people, to be the ones to partner with him in what he wants to do. And there's no better example of that than the ministry of Jesus. When Jesus emerges on the scene, he comes proclaiming the good news of God and saying this, that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And then what does Jesus do immediately after this? Well, in Mark chapter one, it says that as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. The first thing that Jesus does after proclaiming that the kingdom of God is at hand, is he goes and finds ordinary people, fishermen, and invites them to be leaders in his new movement. 
I think that we like to divide the world up into categories. We like to divide the world up into followers and leaders. But the invitation from Jesus was actually to be both follower and leader at the same time. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Because on the one hand, Jesus knows that people aren't perfect. And he wants us to take the posture of follower, of learner, because each of us has room to grow and mature. But on the other hand, Jesus also sees this incredible potential in each one of us to become people of influence, to become people who make impact, to become leaders. And I believe that this same invitation is the same one that Jesus gives to each one of us. But let me share what I see in the world today. I think that for many of us, instead of tapping into that potential that God sees in us, we spend a lot of our time judging and critiquing the leadership of other people. We believe that it's the responsibility of our president or our pastor or our CEOs to fix the world's problems. And when those problems persist, it is easy to go into a mode of blaming the leadership of others without ever giving a thought to our part in all of this. And it is important to hold people accountable for their leadership. But that includes ourselves as well. I think for many of us, we need to realize that we have more power than we think we do. The question is not whether you are a leader or not. The question is what kind of impact will you have by how you choose to lead your life? Because God gives us a choice. Just as Israel had good kings and bad kings, how we choose to live can have a positive or negative influence in the world around us. And so it is up to each of us to decide what kind of impact we want to have what kind of world we want to create. And now this doesn't mean that all of us are supposed to now go and become pastors or that we need to do away with all forms of hierarchy. On the contrary, the invitation to leadership should look different for each one of us. But I think that for some of us, what this may require is then putting aside our notions and assumptions of what leadership is supposed to look like. See, in the kingdom of God, leadership is not limited to a particular title or position that you attain. It's not about having to be the most dynamic or charismatic speaker. It's not about having to have the right answers to everyone's questions or the right solutions to everyone's problems. Leadership is not about being perfect. Instead, leadership emerges in the simple ways that we live our everyday life. What we choose to say, what choices we make, how we respond to the people around us. Being intentional, and purposeful with the influence that God has given us. That is kingdom leadership. And it makes a difference. So to anyone out there, whether you are part of Revive or not, if you think that you are not qualified to lead, or if you feel that you have nothing to contribute, or you wonder if your actions actually make a difference, I want you to know that your life is not an accident. 
that you bear the image of the living God. And your presence, your voice in this world, it matters. You matter. And how you decide to live your life matters and it has an impact in the world. What kind of impact do you want to have in your world? So I wanna invite you to continue journeying with us as we explore in the coming weeks what it looks like to say yes to leading with intentionality and purpose. And for this week specifically, may you come to see the calling that God has on your life to partner with him in the work he wants to do. May you be filled with confidence and assurance that your participation matters. And may we all look to Jesus, the one who teaches and empowers us in the ways of kingdom leadership. Grace and peace to you, my friends. Thank you.